Hey there guys, welcome to the channel. Um, I apologize if I look like a homeless meth addict right now. Um, I promise I'm only one of those things. <laughs> no. Um, so today we are going to be looking at my uh, 20 gallon Epistogramma Borelli breeding setup. Uh, this isn't my normal kind of video. I normally do fishing videos and stuff, but I thought I'd kind of get into this um, doing videos in my fish tanks as well because uh, I'm, I'm a freaking uh, addicted to fish tanks as well so yeah basically I'm gonna give you guys some general information a species profile on the Epistogramma borelli and that'll go into details of my own tank like the water parameters and how I set it up to be successful and actually I, I have my my first spawn with these fish after just uh, a week so you know I'm by no means an expert at this at all or, or really any fish but um, I'm learning and, and I'll, I'll tell you what I did to be successful and, and just try to pass on some, some cool information that might be helpful. So let's just get uh, started with some basic information on epistogrammas. Um, I'll try to give you a little bit of um, action shots here with the mother while we, while we talk about that. Um, but basically this is the, um, that, that's the coconut hut there where she, um, she just brought the fry out yesterday and uh, I don't know if you guys can see but the fry are kind of on the side that's a broken up algae wafer right there those little pieces and the mother's kind of down below you can't really see her too well right now um, there she is you can see her kind of her just the tip of her head poking out she's coming out now but the fry I mean they're they're very, very, very small, and you guys can't really see them too well right now. There's at least 20 of these little guys, or at least there were this morning, maybe. Uh, hopefully none of them have died, but um, anyways, that's what's going on right now. But Epistogramma borelli. So these fish are an, a dwarf cichlid, like, um, you know, German blue rams, that kind of stuff. Um, these guys are from Paraguay uh, and Uruguay, Argentina and they can actually tolerate a little bit uh, colder temperatures and a little bit harder water than other epistogramma like um, cockatoides, uh, agazizi. Um, they're a little bit hardier, I think, than those other species. Um, so, yeah, the water temperature of my tank is at 78 degrees, which even for, for epistogramma borella, that's actually a bit of a, a higher temp, but that's good for spawning. Um, 
and the hardness is my water is very very hard um, I, I don't know the exact number I just use those stupid little strips but it's very hard water my pH is around um, 8 uh, it might be 7.8 but it, it's pretty high as well so yeah they they do fine they, they bred perfectly fine in this uh, within a week of getting the fish I got them from wet spot uh, in Oregon and I kept them in this tank for a week I, I purchased two pairs so I the reason I purchased two pairs is so that I could put a trio in this tank and the other fish the other male is kind of being held in this bowl for for the time being currently they're only the females in here because I took out the the male and the um, the other female but uh, yeah within a week of purchasing those fish they spawned and the eggs and everything survived and they just hatched or just came out of the cave yesterday um, so I guess these fish can tolerate harder harder water and uh, a, a larger temperature range that's basically the general information what's going on here is a lot of stuff this tank when I set it up I had in mind this being a breeding tank so as you can see we have some driftwood um, rock piles okay so big rocks and then smaller rocks all around creating little crevices caves and overall surface area um, we also got leaf piles more sticks Okay, and you can see that I have an open space in the middle because this was going to be a trio and I wanted a territory for one of the females over here and then another territory uh, for a female over here. It didn't really end up working out that way. The other female was just like, nah, I don't want this spot. And then she kept coming over to this female's territory. So I kicked her out of here a couple days ago because she was just being a nuisance. And uh, yeah, this is the other location. You can see you got more rocks sticks leaves just creating little uh little blockades of a site uh, so that you know fish over here cannot see over this way and it just it, it creates a habitat for the fish and something that's really natural and stuff that biofilm um, algaes and, and microorganisms can live on and uh, also beneficial bacteria you know as these leaves as you can see they're decaying in here I don't take these leaves out. I let them completely decay and you can see this here like that's an older leaf there were leaves here and it just leaves this kind of mulm uh, material but that stuff is really beneficial and it not only it provides a uh, you know grazing surface for fry but also uh, a spot for just beneficial bacteria in general to live and oh yes leaves also you know supposedly lower the pH of the water uh, which is another reason I have them in here um, I'm not sure how well it works because my water is again very hard very alkaline so you know it may not have actually changed the pH at all um, I don't really know I'm gonna set with this coffee but um, there's the female again she kinda I, I put little chunks of algae wafer there and she she kind of breaks it up in her mouth, spits it out. She also does suck in the fry. And it looks like she's eating them, but she's just moving them around. So don't be don't be too alarmed if you see that. Because um, that is really just how they take care of their young. <laughs> um, if you do see the male do that, though, you might want to be a little bit concerned. He did, this morning I saw him inhale a fry. Uh, he did spit it out. But I think that's only because the female was there uh, nipping at him. So, yeah, he got removed and moved downstairs today um, as well. So, it's just her in here right now.
I'm gonna leave them in here with her for about a week um, because <laughs> she's chasing that little auto sinkless away uh, I'm going to leave them in here with her for about a week just to let her take care of them and, and it's really cool to watch and she'll make sure they get um, is that a fry? oh okay oh yep we do have a couple fry on that little chunk of algae wafer see they're back there in those little white chunks of algae wafer but she'll take care of them make sure they get food and then in a week from now, I will put them on a little hang on the back um, breeder box. Leave them in there for another couple weeks just so that I can make sure that I'm uh, giving them tons and tons of food and making sure they're getting that food. And then I'll move them into a grow out tank once they reach, you know, a certain size, I would say, you know, maybe a half inch or something like that or, you know, I don't know exactly. <laughs> um, but what else? Oh, yes, we have peat moss soaking in in this corner now I don't know how much that's really affecting pH or you know the water hardness but uh, the hope is that it is bringing it down a little bit you basically just take peat moss um, the regular stuff you get from Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever but make sure it's it's organic and has no additives in it um, you take that you throw it inside of a of a nylon stocking a piece of a nylon stocking and just freaking soak it you can see it's it's kind of sunken now and it leaches out some tannins into the water and hopefully softens it up when you first uh, before you put that stocking in the tank with with peat moss you might want to soak it and just get a, a just get some of that that black water out if you don't want that in the tank uh, I soaked it for about two days but that you could probably replace at some point, I would say within uh, a couple months, I would replace that with new with new peat moss. Um, filtration on this tank. We got one hang on the back filter. I think it's for a 20 gallon tank. And it's just got sponge in it, just a, a bio sponge, that's it. I do water changes. Um, I do water changes twice a week, about 25% and that seems to keep the water nice and clean zero nitrates you know zero nitrites and uh just nice clean water that's really what you want for for these fish to spawn um so yeah uh, back to the, the the decorations here uh basically yes you just want this tank to be really densely planted uh what i have in here is all this stuff in the back uh behind this foreground plants is crypt spiralis all right, we got tons of crypt spiralis in here. Stuff grows like a weed, so it's good to have in the background. Um, up front here, we have some uh, Rotala rotundifolia red. Um, I just took that as a clipping from my other tank, and it sprouted right up. Uh, we have some Ludwigia dark red. Uh, I think that's a variety of repens. And um, yeah, this stuff, I, I just trimmed it. It was all up to the top. So I trimmed it, cut the tops off, replanted. And you can see I got tons of like little new shoots coming up there. What else do we have? Some right there. So when you cut it, uh, I'm trying to show you an example. Yeah, when you cut it, you see these tiny little new. Um, come on, focus. Oh uh, my goodness. Oh, there we go. You see, when you cut it, you get these little new shoots right there. So. Uh, that's cool. What else do we have? Just a stray retal on the front. Um, this is another type of Ludwig. I think it's broadleaf growing there. And also, let's see if you can see. Also back in there. So it is pretty heavily planted. Um, I think that's key. One for you know more grazing area, more uh, more surface area in the tank. But also, it, it does really keep the nitrates and nitrates down. Um, these plants are just soaking up whatever uh, nitrates and nitrates are in the tank and using it to grow. Stem plants are really key for that. Other plants aren't going to do as good of a job. So anything like um, Ludwigia, Rotala, Bacopa, um, anything like that that's a, a, a stem plant is going to be a really good idea. The autosynclists do not bother 
or even pay any attention to the to the dwarf cichlids or the fry or the eggs they they really don't care they just graze on all this stuff in here and um, they're like little robots really the apisto I mean the female apisto in here she will bite them if they come close but that's just her nature she they're not really oh you can see the fry now see him under her look at all them. well there we go finally got good shot of them we'll see if we can get some some action of her um, sucking them up into her mouth and then and then she'll split spit them back out she probably doesn't like my uh, camera here but um, these fish are about yeah uh, a couple days old really so as far as feeding them, I don't have to be too concerned. They'll just kind of feed on microorganisms and all this leaf litter and stuff. But in a few days, I will uh, transfer them into a hang on the back breeder box, and I'm going to feed microworms, uh, crushed up fish food, algae wafers, all that kind of stuff. You can see her. She just kind of tries to keep them in a, the general area they always try to travel away they'll be like doo, 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 doo. And she'll be like no come back they're little mischievous little babies that's for sure but she's she's very bright yellow that's how you know these fish are, are breeding is they're bright yellow um, the way I got them to breed I didn't really do anything you just basically give them a really nice environment make sure the water is clean and um, they kind of do it for you. Um, one thing I noticed that could help possibly is just rearranging uh, rearranging some of the, the decorations, you know, the leaf litter, the driftwood. Um, and you can uh, drop the water level, let it evaporate, don't do a water change for a, a week or two, and then fill it up with um, lots of cold not too cold but somewhat you know colder colder water and that'll kind of simulate the, the wet season but other than that man they will these these dwarf cichlids kind of do it themselves I mean I'm not very experienced and I bred these they've spawned within a week so I think anybody can probably do it uh, one thing to keep in mind is that the individual fish you know does matter some fish are different than others like I had a trio in this tank, one male and two females, and one of the females was just really strange. She didn't seem interested at all. Maybe it was a sneaker male. Um, I don't know, but she was just kind of acting strange and hanging out near this female's territory. So I took her out. Um, yeah, you just have to give them time, I guess, sometimes, and make sure that they're actually females <laughs> and not sneaker males, because that can happen. But that's basically the setup. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Oh, and the light that we're using to grow these plants is a Nikru Sky LED. It's, I think, it's 18 watts. Or no, it's 16 watts. Uh, it has uh, white LEDs and RGB LEDs, which are uh, red, green, blue. I don't know. They seem to be working pretty well. You know, it's not an expensive light at all. I think it was like 20 bucks or something like that. But uh, yeah, if you guys have any more questions, leave them down in the comments, and I'll try to get to all those. Peace out.